Uh, my name is Xinjo. I'm a postdoc at uh, Dr. Annalisa Brook Brackles Group at the School of uh, Atmosphere and Earth Science. And I'm glad to have this opportunity to talk about uh, our group recent, recent work and uh, how it's connected with the sustainable development goal. So the SDG 14 proposed by the United Nations in 2015 want us to pay attention to the life under the water. So one of the targets associated with this goal is uh, sustainable fishing. The sustainable fishing requires us to adapt a proper strategy um, to harvesting um, fish in a proper rate that uh, the overall fish population didn't decline dramatically over the time. And to achieve these goals, we need a combination of the scientific knowledge, such as the population dynamic of, uh, of fishes, as well as the, you know, the geospatial distribution of fishes with the, um, with the real um, pra practice strategies. And this is like uh, exactly what our group are working on. Specifically, um, we are working on important uh, commercial and the recreational fish species in the Gulf of Mexico that named the red snapper. I think everyone knows red snappers. Really? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, I would say it's a good fish to eat. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, this fish uh, uh, support a multi-billion dollar fish industry in the, in the Gulf regions. And uh, back to the 1990s, um, the red snapper stock was considered in uh, over fish conditions. And recently, with the help of rebuilding plan, that started in the 2015, or 2005, and the red snapper stock was no longer considered in the overfish condition since 2018. However, people agreed that uh, the continued effort was necessary for this stock's rebuilding. And uh, a better understanding of the early life cycle of red snapper is uh, especially for the pelagic larval duration stage is very important and can benefit to the um, to the stock management assessment because this stage can have a uh, can can have an inf influence on the variability of uh, recruitment and uh, the strength of year class of the red snappers. So by motivated uh, so motivated from this, like our group research is, we want to use a modeling approach to characterize the dispersion and the connectivity of red snapper larvae in this PLD stage in the northern Gulf of Mexico, that we want to contribute knowledge for a better stock management and assessment for the red snappers. So what is the PLD? And generally, after the female adult red snapper spawn their eggs, the eggs and then hatched larvae will stay in the water about 26 to 30 days. And during these times, um, the those larvae will be drifted by grunt to some other places, to some other places before they settle and grow to the juvenile, grow to the juvenile. And at the same time, and the larvae themselves, it have the behavior to adjust their vertical and horizontal positions. And we want to use model to simulate this, this process and identify where the larvae settled. So we used uh, integrated modeling framework, including a, a high resolution and hydrodynamic model that called uh, CROCO, allow us to capture in the current field in the Gulf of Mexico. And, uh, and a particle tracking tool, uh, like a long-term particle tracking tool called ISHUP, that we can check in where, the, where those larvae goes, which consider their own behaviors. And for the model results, we find uh, something interesting that uh, the larvae has a different uh, settlement characteristic in the area west, we call it west, in the area west of the Gulf of Mexico and east of the Gulf of Mexico that we call the West GM and East GM here. So the West GM refers to the area west of the Mississippi Delta that including the coastline of the Mexico, Texas, and the part of Louisiana. And, uh, and of course, east of the East GM means area east of the Mississippi Delta, that including the coastline of uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and a part of the Louisiana. And with what we find interesting is, is that in the West GM, there's a clear um, migration, there's a clear offshore to inshore migration pattern of red snapper larvae from spawning to, to settling, which means that the Adult red snapper will spawn their eggs in a deeper region. Usually, water depth is greater than 70, 
75 meters, and those eggs and then hatched larvae will be transported by the current, by the current to the near shore region. And this migration pattern is it being emphasized if we consider certain larvae behaviors. And, and those larvae settled in a wide area for the West GOM. But this is not the case for the East GOM. In the East GOMs, our model results show is that there is a marked alignment between where they're spawning and they settling, which means there is a strong self-recruitment of the red snapper larvae in the East GM. Additionally, our model results also show a limited connectivity between the West GM and the East GM, which means, for example, only few larvae that originated from the Texas shelf can be transported to the East GM and settled there, and, the, and the vice versa. So the different characteristic of the settlement for the red stem larvae in the West GM and East GM with the limited connectivity to us, that we should uh, regard these two regions as distinct entities instead of the traditional way that we, that we regard them as a unified one. So that is all for my um, presentation, and thank you guys for listening.